Buddy the Elf, what's your favorite color? Put that down. As we sit down to watch Elf with our everyday, normal, real-world outlooks, at first we can't take Buddy at all seriously. We're skeptical, looking at him as this ridiculous madman. You sit on a throne of lies. And thus we the viewers start out as the real Scrooges of the movie. As the story goes on, we need Buddy to melt our icy grown-up hearts and make us believe in magic again. The way Elf manages this task is by tapping into our nostalgia for classic Christmas movies, and then using that nostalgia to build something creative and original. John Favreau's modern classic rehashes the holiday genre through many references to beloved movies and the traditional Christmas story arc. From the start, the Rankin-Bass style stop-motion animation is a nod to the classic TV specials Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Frosty the Snowman. The elf costumes and the layout of Santa's workshop at the North Pole are based on those in the old Rudolph special, and Elf essentially recreates Rudolph's snowman character. Further pushing Elf's nostalgic feel from the beginning, director Favreau relies on practical camera work. He doesn't use CGI to film the elves. Instead, forced perspective, multiple sets with varying platforms next to each other, and creative lighting were combined with Will Ferrell's natural height to make Buddy seem bigger than those around him and uncomfortably large in his environment. The cartoonish introduction to Buddy's character, as if he exists in a pastiche of beloved Christmas traditions, turns Buddy into a beacon of warm, candy cane-flavored memories for the viewer. Brought to life in the heart-melting innocence of Will Ferrell's performance, Does someone need a hug? Buddy is the human embodiment of the Christmas spirit itself. In Buddy's eyes, everything's possible, and the world is full of wondrous delights, the way we saw it as kids. As Buddy leaves behind the North Pole to enter New York City for a classic fish-out-of-water adventure, he still ends up working at Gimbel's, a nod to what is possibly the most sentimental Christmas movie of all time, Miracle on 34th Street. That movie features a running rivalry between department stores Macy's 34th Street and Gimbel's, which in reality went out of business in 1987. Yeah, why don't you go back to Gimbel's? <laughs> Some of the movie's references to Christmas classics are more subtle. Buddy's trip to the bridge in the snow is a reference to George Bailey's depressing bridge scene in It's a Wonderful Life. One of the elves is played by Peter Billingsley, the actor known for his role as young Ralphie in A Christmas Story. Others are more abstract, hidden Easter eggs, like when Jovi asks Buddy, Why are you messing with me? Did Crumpet put you up to this? Crumpet is the name writer David Sedaris gave himself years ago while working as a Christmas elf at Macy's. And his sister, Amy Sedaris, also appears in Elf as Deb. Mount Crumpet is also the mountain where the Grinch lives and how the Grinch stole Christmas. Elf is also informed by cinema classics outside of the holiday genre, as Buddy eats cotton balls, is forced into doing a split on the escalator, and wrestles Peter Dinklage's character after mistaking him for a real-life elf. He's an angry elf. Farrell's slapstick comedy, accentuated by his lanky figure, draws on the timeless physical gags of Charlie Chaplin or Buster Keaton. And when Buddy stomps through Central Park, he's meant to remind us of Bigfoot. The cheeky hilarity of dropping the Christmas mashup into real life entertains us with just how ridiculous the Christmas stories look in the context of our everyday lives. But while we're laughing at Buddy, the movie is reworking the holiday formula to reach us on a deeper level. It cracks through our cynical, unbelieving outer shells. It's cold More crucially than its fun illusions, on the storytelling level, Elf draws on common holiday character tropes to deliver on the old Christmas story arc and emotional payoff. Buddy's biological father, Walter, represents a classic trope of the Scrooge, or the Grinch, who hates the holiday season and lacks compassion in his general life. No, I think we should take a $30,000 bath so some kid can understand what happened to a puppy and a friggin' pigeon. Ship him. Like Scrooge characters who came before, Walter has to experience redemption as he learns to empathize, believe in the existence of magic, and literally save Christmas. Santa Claus is coming to As modern-day, real-world viewers who find the idea of Santa's workshop absurd, at first we see Buddy, or the Christmas spirit, from the outside vantage of this real-world perspective, essentially from Walter's point of view. Buddy's infectious enthusiasm is the good-natured butt of the joke. I love you! I love you! I love you! 
But through our growing identification with Buddy, the holiday spirit personified, we release the inner children buried within us. Buddy's unrelenting positivity and his nostalgic Christmas movie world subtly transform us, the Grinchly viewers, and awaken our capacity for joy. By the end, the holiday spirit of brotherly love triumphs over the realistic Grinch view, and good faith represents the deep wisdom of the story. Christmas spirit is about believing, not seeing. It's in this reversal that Elf proves just how original it actually is. It bundles up all the Christmas cliches in Buddy, invites our inner Grinches to put him down with lighthearted mocking, and then gradually proves us wrong, as it draws out the simple, jolly spirit within us. Santa! Oh my god! Santa here? I know him! I know him! <laughs>